Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Monday, February 1st, and from Michigan restaurants reopening to the vaccine rollout in Ohio schools, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, today is yet another first alert day. So I'm gonna pass it off to our first alert weather team. At 9 p.m., things do start to shift off to the east and dry air finally works in and we're gonna kick this winter system out once and for all by tomorrow morning. Still cloudy skies, another cold day, but nothing compared to what is on the way with our newly issued first alert days and our 10 day forecasts. All right, we'll get to that in just a second. How about the rain showers Thursday? Yes, temperatures are gonna go above freezing for this system. It's not gonna melt all the snow away. It's still gonna be here as temperatures plummet again Friday into Saturday. And notice we've got three of these first alert days out there starting Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Daytime highs that will be frigid, overnight lows likely to go below zero, and wind chills potentially well below zero. So this will be the coldest air we've felt all day, uh, all year. The Biden administration held its second coronavirus press briefing this morning after promising to be more transparent about its pandemic response strategy. During today's briefing, the new head of the CDC, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, said new COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations are down, which is, of course, encouraging. But deaths in the U.S. are actually on the rise. In fact, in January, the CDC recorded the highest number of deaths in any month since the pandemic began with more than 90,000. And there are now three COVID-19 mutations detected in the United States. Walensky said out of the dozens of variant cases in the U.S., most of them are with the variant first discovered in the U.K. But three cases involving a mutation that was first detected in South Africa have also been confirmed, as well as one case involving a strain first found in Brazil. Now, the UK strain reportedly spreads more easily and is believed to be deadlier, but the South Africa strain is prompting even more concern because of early indications that vaccines may not be as protective against it. But top infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci said that you should still get the vaccine as soon as it becomes available to you. You need to get vaccinated when it becomes available as quickly and as expeditiously as possible throughout the country. And the reason for that is that there is a fact that permeates virology, and that is that viruses cannot mutate if they don't replicate. And if you stop their replication by vaccinating widely and not giving the virus an open playing field, to continue to respond to the pressures that you put on it, you will not get mutations. And today marks the first official day of vaccination for Ohio school staff, although a few schools, including Notre Dame locally, were able to get out ahead of the game and got started on the process last week. So how does this work? First, each school is asked how many doses they will need. Then they pick a provider like the health department or Mercy or ProMedica to help get them going. So if you work at a school, your district should reach out to you. School vaccinations have their own process, and this is to avoid competition with Ohio's oldest citizens for vaccination. That has also expanded this week to include those 70 and older. So if you are 70 or older and you wish to get a vaccine, you need to register and schedule your own appointment. If you have trouble, you can always call your area office on aging or dial 211 for the United Way. Now, I have links in the description of this video showing you exactly where you can get vaccinated in Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. Plus, I have an extra link for you to check out where your school stands in DeWine's list of vaccinations. So check those out if you need it. And also today for our friends in Michigan, bars and restaurants were able to get back into indoor dining. The order was issued two weeks ago by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services and has relaxed some of the state's indoor activity restrictions. The order allows for indoor dining, but with a number of safety precautions in place. Restaurants and bars can reopen at 25% capacity with up to 100 people. Tables must be six feet apart with no more than six people per table. Outdoor tents with four sides are permitted under these same rules. Bars and restaurants must close by 10 p.m. And contact information must be collected from diners for contact tracing purposes. The current order will last until Sunday, February 21st. 
And today we got a big update on Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost's lawsuit against First Energy, which he said was filed in an attempt to save Ohio ratepayers some money. The utility has settled part of the lawsuit out of court and has agreed to stop using a clause in House Bill 6, ending a guaranteed profit rider that would have cost its customers an extra $102 million this year. So what is House Bill 6? Passed by the Ohio General Assembly last year, it approved a billion dollar bailout to First Energy and reportedly saved two nuclear power plants from closing in the northern part of the state. It ends at the center of a $60 million federal bribery probe claiming that then House Speaker Larry Householder used the money to politically position for and succeed at passing that bailout. And before I go, how about a bit of fun local news? You know, Ernest Brewworks, that awesome Toledo brewery. Well, it is expanding and it could have a downtown Toledo location as early as this summer. First things first, the business has hit its maximum brewing capacity and has outgrown its tap room. In order to keep growing, the brewery will be taking over the former Kroger location in the Southland Shopping Center at 1415 Burn with plans to open in 2022. So that new facility in South Toledo will be equipped with a 30 barrel brew house and will be able to produce almost five times the beer that they currently produce. Plus, they'll have a giant tap room with seating for 150 in the main area, 100 seat private area, and a 100 person patio along with plans to build a kitchen with a menu focused on food that pairs well with Ernest's beer, of course. Now back to the downtown location. So this one will have a tap room and a small batch facility at 25 South St. Clair Street, which is just one block away from Fifth Third Field. So there they will brew on a two barrel system, creating small batch, experimental, and limited release beers. This tap room will be built to serve those beers along with their core products to have on-site enjoyment to take home in six packs or of course in individual Dora cups. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.